た。はあはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっ Of our glorious hobby and how they are going to up your game so that everything has more of an edge. Speaking of edge, that most terrible of things, the things that will cripple a man, the thing that will eat your heart out and leave a black gaping hole. We're talking about fear. This is Key Mechanics. Key Mechanics. Dang, are they substantive. Okay, everybody, we're going to be talking about fear today, and I wanted to break it down with the three sort of chunks of fear that I see, the three aspects, the sides to the prism of terror. I have been quoted in the past as saying that fear is the commodity that a dungeon master deals in, right? That you are a vendor of fear, and every once in a while you just give it out for free. It, really what that means is, is to me the the substance or the glue of the game is fear and it has three sides to it it can't just come in any form and what i want to put forward is these three aspects of fear in your game and your awareness of them in theory will give you a better sense of how to use it in your game utilize it as a tool break it down so that things get cooler And you, in turn, by the distributive property, will be cooler. <laughs> This is how logic works. What are the three aspects of fear in tabletop RPGs? And let me break it down for you. First of all, there is GM fear, player fear, character fear. And this is what we're going to analyze, think through in depth, and then pff, mind grapes and your understanding my understanding our understanding of each other will be greater and the world will be better for it <laughs> first of all gm fear is the strangest one gm fear occurs usually before the session part of doing prep as a game master is this sort of nervousness or trepidation with introducing content to players anyone who has ever created a session To play D&D knows exactly what I'm talking about. You're not sure it's going to be cool enough. You're not sure your monsters are going to be deadly enough. You're not sure if it's all going to work out. There's so many different considerations that I think what happens with GM fear is we get over preparation. This is the result of GM fear. You prepare so many things to mitigate your concern about the quality and excitement of your content that you actually begin to choke the life out of it. Now, this is, there's a lot of sort of love stories about this type of topic, right? Where, you know, one of the lovers is so enraptured with the other that they sort of choke, they smother them, they choke the life out of them. And this is what can happen when a GM has this sort of hesitation, fear, or concern about the quality of their content. So, Just here it is right here coming from old Hanker and Fernall. That's me. Put that fear aside. Be done with it. You don't need it. Now, if it's the very first time you have ever run any tabletop game, okay, a little bit might be useful. <laughs> That's kind of like survival fear, right? We want that in our lives because it keeps us alive. So that first time, yeah, maybe a little bit of trepidation is not only natural, but is useful to bring you into a full awareness. It actually is quite simple and free-minded to come up with RPG content, and you don't need to doubt yourself. So I know that I can't banish fear and doubt in others just through some silly YouTube video, but I am here to tell you as an affirmation, bald eagle in the tree, do not have any fear as a GM. Draw from the innocent place, the child's mind, to develop your RPG content. Just ask yourself what you want and make it so and set aside GM fear. Player fear is quite simply the sensation that we're getting our butts kicked and now we need to very carefully proceed. This form of fear is at its best when players retreat or pull back from a challenge because they are terrified of getting killed, losing gear, Uh, failing at their mission or whatever. Player fear is when a player is the most immersed in your game. Now, you don't want your game to be so terrifying that your players are just like paralyzed and crippled with horror the whole time. That's pushing it maybe a little too far. But 
If your players do have bona fide personal hesitation and fear for the lives of their character, for their the, the well-being of their brethren and sistren, and the possible success or failure of their mission, this is a sign to you as the game master that you have achieved the highest level in your craft. Everyone at the table is comfortable with the rules. You've all had good experiences doing fair adjudication together. And what they're afraid of is the outcomes that are about to unfold. This is when you have them in the palm of your hand. It's also a great time to exercise kindness and generosity and encouragement because you already have them hanging by a thread. There's no reason to then snip that thread. All right, finally, we have the mechanical part. And this is what I would definitely call a key mechanic to building your encounters, which is what these videos are really all about, right? We want, you want, I want very practical components to the game that are enactable tomorrow, tonight. And mechanical fear is something you can put into any encounter. Character fear is a game mechanic. You can rely on players to play their characters as if their characters are afraid, even if they aren't, right? That's the fundamental social agreement of role playing. But mechanical fear is slightly different and it can take a different, some different forms. Now, let's talk about what this is. This is where you mechanically force fear upon a character, usually because they miss a role. And what you usually wanna do is use charisma as the stat that combats mechanical fears. If my mind flayer jumps out of the bushes and goes, Bleh! then we're going to need that character to make a charisma roll, to have the force of will to be like, I'm not afraid of you, illithid beast, Bleh! right? If they don't have the force of will, the power of character to refuse that fear, to push it away, then the character is mechanically afraid. You could imagine them at this moment as having a little, a little fear icon bobbing over their head like MMO style, right? Or there's a little ring under their feet that turns red because they are now feared. So what happens when they're feared? There's a lot of different things you can do. First of all, you can just stat bump them. So as long as you're feared, which is X time, usually I would do like 1d4 rounds, right? Everything you're gonna roll in that time is gonna be difficult or hard or at a penalty, depending on what system you're playing, right? Like back in 3.5 D&D, we would say this would be a minus two. So as long as you're feared, everything you do is gonna be a minus two penalty. Because you're just like, ah, you're trying to knock an arrow and you're like, oh God, oh God, oh God, right? Now in ICRPG terms, we just say everything's gonna be hard. As long as you're afraid, everything you're going to roll is going to be difficult, whether it's casting, whether it's hitting with a sword, whether it's defending with a shield, whatever. That's the first form. The second form is fleeing, fleeing for your life. So the fear occurs for the indicated time, which for flight, one round is a little more merciful. But while you're mechanically feared, your character, they have to move they have to use their entire move to get away from the source of their fear, either for one round or longer than that. Longer than that is pretty mean because that means they're just bolting out of the battlefield. It removes them from battle. This is personally one of my favorite forms of mechanical fear because again, it causes movement in combat and large amounts of movement in combat are the stuff of dreams. They get your group separated. They get your group in different types of terrain. They move characters in and out of ranges and distances involved in abilities of bad guys, right? They're not always just getting the claw attack from the bad guy because they're right next to them. They move into the ranged attacks. We see more things happen. More things are necessary as well if characters begin to split or spread, such as using teleport or translocate or using boots of swiftness to get back into the fight. There's a lot of things that unfold once movement is forced. And in this case, you're forcing it using mechanical fear and in very specificness, specificity, you are using flight or fleeing as the form of mechanical fear. The third type of mechanical fear that I want to introduce is paralysis or catatonia. This is, and we all know this feeling, especially from dreams. Sometimes you can be so afraid. So the mind flayer leaps out from the bushes and he's like, I am Zotar. And he's like, ah, 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 ah. And you like almost can't breathe. Your rib cage goes tight. Your limbs won't obey. You can't even muster the power to scream in horror because you are paralyzed with fear. Now this is going to create the exact opposite effect in your game as flight. 
There's no movement at all. Actually, there are no actions at all. This is the equivalent of a stun. So if you use a 1d4 rounds timer for the amount of stun and you roll a four, this poor guy is, is, is deadlocked forever. That's really brutal. So you can use this if you have extreme levels of fear, say with like a Baron of Hell or Dracula or a really powerful entity of fear. Now there's one component that you got to be careful with this. This is a great way to get a character killed is that they're right next to the threat. Potentially they can't move and can't act. They're completely paralyzed. They can't even speak. And for maybe even more than a round, things are going to be either whacking on them or, or drawing their blood out or something horrible. Paralysis is going to be the one that will push your group the hardest. They need a way to either cleanse the paralysis or heal you out of it or remove condition is often the name of a sort of a buff or spell, right? They need a way to get you to shake you out of this. If it's damage, then I could just pop my buddy in the back of the head and give him one damage. And pop out of that fear, dude. You can see how wildly different fear paralysis is from flight or from fleeing. Totally different effects on what's going to be happening. And remember, this isn't always about combat. This can be about exploration. This can be about working with traps. This can be about working with struggling through environmental fear. It doesn't always have to be combat. So as we're talking through key mechanics, you're going to miss out on some of the nuance and depth if it always kind of goes to combat in your brain. So you've got the three aspects of the prism, GM fear, player fear, and character fear. And then within character fear, you have my favorite three kinds. I'm sure there are more, but there's stat bumping. So like making things difficult. There's flight, which is my absolute favorite. And then there's paralysis, which is the most hazardous. That's the most intense and can be very, very dangerous to the lives of your players' characters. So I hope you guys are illuminated by this discussion of darkness. This is just talking about fear and how you can use it as a key mechanic in designing your encounters and even more so in playing out your encounters. An encounter can still just be you're in a square room and a mind flayer comes through the far door. That can still be the extent of the design but you have a bullet under your mind flare that indicates the type of fear that he can induce in those who gaze upon his tentacled visage. <laughs> Keep it real. Don't steal. You're always going to get a deal. This is Hanker Inferno, your old buddy here, Runehammer. I'm out!